<laughs> All right, so most requested vegetable that we cut up is always an onion, right? And it, every recipe starts with an onion, absolutely every recipe. And sometimes that's the hurdle for me for making dinner. It's like, oh, I gotta start with the onion. They freeze really well. If you chop a whole bunch of them, medium onion chopped is one cup. So I'll chop a whole bunch of onions, put them in a freezer bag, one cup, throw them in the freezer, they freeze forever. Uh, okay, not forever, but like six months easy. And you don't have to thaw them when you start cooking. Uh, frozen onion right into a pan with some heated oil and you're off to the races. So that's a good trick. Um, a lot of people like to cry when they chop onions. <laughs> this for you, or, or just in general. <laughs> because those vapors that are released when you slice into an onion really affect your eyes. So you can, instead of do that, you can look cool like Bridget. These are onion goggles. Mm -hmm. Literally, <laughs> onion yeah. goggles. That's like the other day I saw a banana slicer. I saw that. We it's were like, in New York and saw that. What that is, right? There's no resistance in a banana either. It's like, <laughs> these huh. have a little gasket around uh, the lens to keep these those those terrible gases away <laughs> from your sensitive eyes. We both wear contact lenses, which is why we don't cry on camera. After <laughs> the show's done, though, it's a whole other game. Uh, no, but the, the onions, you know, the, the, the fumes can really hurt. And uh, one thing, you're going to look like an idiot, but if your eyes are really burning, stick your head in the freezer because it's really just, it's very soothing. And you're kind of, I'm not kidding. I know, I'm not kidding. She actually does it, no matter if she's cutting <laughs> onions or not. It's just, where's Julia? She's in the freezer again. <laughs> All right, so onion, whole onion, not peeled. Um, first thing I'm going to do is slice off the tip end and take it away. Now I'm gonna cut the onion in half again, right through, there we go, right through that root part. So there's equal amount of root on both halves. That root is what holds those layers together. So you go right through that. This is when you peel it. And I like to take the outside peel and also that first layer away. Cause that first layer is often slimy, thin in places, can have some bruises. And now this is what I like to call the Bridget Lancaster method because she taught it to me the other week and I think it's the best way to teach someone how to cut an onion. And so you have to pay me five bucks every yes, time you every use time. it. every time. And you have to say thank you, Bridget Lancaster, every time you do it. Um, so usually when you uh, have half an onion, you have to cut it three ways, right? You have to cut it this way, this way, and that's the kicker, right? That's the hard one, that's when things start falling apart, and then this way. So this is how you get around doing that. Instead of using a half of an onion, you cut it through the root end again, and you do a quarter of an onion. So you start cutting towards the root, but not through, that way, and then look, you flip it on its side. I know, right, it's a game changer. And then you do that again, and then you can just go through and mince it up. See, I've got tiny hands, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I'm like, I'm like I should work at a carnival or something. I like <laughs> really small hands. So onions, even like a regular size onion, which is the size of a tennis ball, is a medium onion, by the way. Um, sometimes they're just too unwieldy, and it's that horizontal cut that always got me. Usually, while we were doing te television. Yeah. yeah, and also if you're slicing an onion, you know, there's two ways to slice an onion. Slice it so you get the rainbows, or you slice uh, it pole to pole, where you get sort of nice, uh, more elega elegant looking lengths. Uh, that actually makes a different texture when they're cooked. If you make the rainbows, they will melt down and break down the texture a bit more. So that's good if you're trying to hide an onion in a soup or let them break down. If you want the onions to retain their texture, slice them pole to pole. All right, so next, the most exciting vegetable in the entire produce section, <laughs> it's celery. And did you guys know you're gonna eat this? It's not just a swizzle stick for your Bloody Mary. It's kind of cool, I just found that out. Um, but the problem is that a lot of recipes, including some of ours, will call for a specific amount of celery, whether it's chopped or minced. And you take off one stalk, and you chop it, and you mince it, and you measure it out, and it's not quite enough. So you take another one off, and then it's too much, and you end up composting it or throwing it away. You don't have to do that anymore. So this will get you exactly the right amount every single time. So always buy celery like this. It's going to stay fresher than the one at a time pieces uh, that you find at the supermarket. The leaves are great. If you can find the, uh, the whole heads of celery with the leaves on, it's a lot of flavor in there. And you can use it in just about any recipe that you're going to chop celery. But here's what I do. I hold it like this, whole thing. I'm not taking off one stalk at a time. 
and I cut through. And this all goes into my freezer right beside the onions. And I'm going to use it for soups, stews, uh, you know, or just really fantastic Stop. dinner <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great job on the report card, kids. Guess what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> what a mom. I'm so <laughs> lucky I haven't been reported. <laughs> um, and now you can just chop off every little bit that you need from all of these pieces. This is how they do right. it in the restaurants, right? Chop so what got, you need. Just chop what you need. You can go back in there, make it as fine as you want. And then the rest of this, you just want to wrap uh, loosely in aluminum foil. It will keep forever in your crisper drawer if you do that. Aluminum foil has magic powers. You can wear it as a hat. <laughs> you can wrap it this with aluminum foil. Um, it's also great for rhubarb as well. It will keep rhubarb a lot longer. But that is just a simple restaurant trick that we're using now for uh, celery. All right, moving on to carrots. Uh, I'm going to show you a really easy way to make a carrot julienne. And this is not the way I learned in culinary school, where you had to cut it into lengths, and then you had to waste trim pieces. This is the fast and easy method. Now, these won't look perfect, but they're good enough for home. So first, you want to start with a bigger carrot, one of the bigger of the bunch. And you want to make sure it's peeled. And the first cut's going to be at a severe angle. And then you're going to continue to slice the carrot uh, at this sort of severe bias. You go until you can't really cut anymore. Save that for stock. And then you take these pieces and you lie them down. And then you can make nice julienne, which is good for a salad or a stir fry. And then if you get really good, you can just stack them on top of each other. That is so much faster than the old squaring yeah. off of the carrot. Well, right? it's very rustic. I mean, you're not going to impress your French chef with this, but if you're not getting grated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I've yeah. said this to Julia before. If somebody sits down at my table and says, these aren't perfect julienne, <laughs> <laughs> you are out of there. Sorry, Buster. All right. How about uh, move on to red pepper? Ready? Yeah. All right. So this is an unripe pepper. It's delicious, but it has bitter flavor. This is the same pepper that's been ripened. It's sweeter. That's it. These peppers are bred to be fancy and they're really expensive and they should be they should be grown with dollar signs on the side of them <laughs> they're milder in flavor more expensive but if you like sweet peppers you want to go with the red and if you like a little bit of bitter you know what in a lot of cajun creole food it just doesn't taste the same with a red bell pepper but i'm going to show you roasted real bit the roasted red bell peppers that you've picked with peter right <laughs> um Tastes great. You can throw them on the grill. You can do it with the broiler. Amazing flavor. Uh, and you want nice big pieces of the bell pepper to do this so that it doesn't fall through the grill grates <laughs> after you've minced it. You know, who does that? <laughs> no one I know. <laughs> so here's an easy way. <laughs> you just take off the top. And you lop off the bottom. And I can see you right through that, right? So it's, it's hollow all the way through. Cut down one side. You're going to open it up and see that seed bed. Rip that guy right out of there. And now all I have to do is press this down kind of flat, make it a bit more manageable, and take my knife. And I'll start with my finger on one side and then move it away once that knife gets right in there. And then do the same all the way through. Just get any remaining seeds. And then this is ready to be thrown right under the broiler or onto the grill so much easier. And then think about it, once you take it out and you have to let it steam, it's going to be so much easier to get uh, all that charred skin off of a piece like this. You can actually also throw these in as well. Just break them up into pieces if you need to get that out, but they'll go right in too. So waste nothing. All right. And now let me just throw this away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to tomatoes. We're going to use this as our representation of something that's round that you want to make into a square. Um, first thing you want to do uh, is get out the core and that hard bit right underneath the stem. Use the tip of a knife. And a chef knife or a paring knife would work nicely here. I'm just angling the blade. I know this looks a little funny, doesn't it? Like I'm using a huge knife. Uh, but this is the go-to knife. If you're going to have one, have the chef's knife. Uh, and then you pull out just the little cone there. And then you're going to take this, and it's the same no matter um, what kind of vegetable it is. You want It's round, so you're going to cut it into nice slabs. And you're going to take each slab, cut it into sticks, 
cut the sticks into dice. And again, this works with any vegetable that's round or anything that's round. Planks, sticks, and dice. And notice I didn't seed the tomato at all because the seeds uh, and the gel that surrounds the seeds has the most tomato flavor in the whole thing. So you don't want to get rid of that. Now, if you're really bothered by seeds, leave them in there and strain them out at the end. But don't get rid of them before you cook because you'll lose a lot of the flavor. All right, so that's a whole tomato. But we love using cherry tomatoes because they're almost always in season. They're a little bit sweeter. They have a really long shelf life. Oh, also, the trick I should mention, if you have tomatoes, the trick to storing them is to store them upside down, stem side down. They will last a lot longer because all the gases that come out of the stem um, actually make it ripen and go bad more quickly. So upside down, you'll probably get about two to three times amount of uh, shelf life out of your tomatoes. All right, so cherry tomatoes. Now, the thing about cooking with cherry tomatoes is you usually have to cut them in half first. And you know, you sit there with one tomato at a time, cutting it in half, um, cursing at your dull knife. And uh, so here's a different way to do it. Julia's so, going to show you how to dice. No. <laughs> cherry tomatoes, <laughs> one at a time. That would take a while. Um, I've done that, actually. I bet you It's have. ridiculous. <laughs> um, so take two lids from the deli um, at the supermarket and take your cherry tomatoes, and you put them... Um, sort of in right in one of the deli lids. Other deli lid on top. Take your knife, cut right through the middle. <laughs> Have cherry tomatoes. I know. It's a game changer. You know, this one brings the house down every time. Yep. I love doing this one. It yep. is, it's like that just saved five to six minutes of work, right? It's like 20 years just added to our <laughs> lives with that one. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to chop broccoli. <laughs> Everyone's favorite vegetable, right? 